Hi guys, it's wonderful to be with you today. Um, this sermon is called Poison. And I will put it up on YouTube as soon as I'm able. Along with the other two videos that I did last week and the week before. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you've done and what you're about to do. I thank you for what you're about to speak to us about the emotional poisons and cancers in our lives. Lord God, teach us today how um, to get them out of our lives so we can be free. Give us practical tips and tools, oh God. Speak to me, speak through me. Speak to me, speak through me in the name of Jesus. Amen. So guys, I hope everyone is ha having a great day, day or night, whenever you're watching this. Um, I was reading... Um, a book, because many of you know I'm a reader. So I was reading a book called The Broken the, the, the Broken Vows. And in that book, it was about um, a, a man and a woman. Um, uh, they're, they've known each other forever. And they, they fell in love. They had a relationship. And they wanted to get married. But the grandparents, they were of opposing families. And they absolutely hated each other. And as I, as I was uh, reading this book, uh, the Lord spoke to me. This is not a Christian romance. It's a regular contemporary romance. Um, the Lord spoke to me as I was reading this book. He says, I want you to talk about poison. I said, what? He said, I want you to talk about emotional poison. And so that's when I'm doing right now. Um, a lot of, we know what physical poison is. Um, if, if anyone has read Snow White or watched a couple of episodes of, of Dateline and, or, or seen the, some of the cleaning products, with the skull and crossbones in your house, um, meaning poisonous. We all know the first thing that poison can do, it can cause real serious harm. And not all poisons can kill you, but all of them can cause real serious harm. Some, some can, ca can cause death. And a lot of people, they might not have a lot of physical poisons. We, we may know to not, to not drink certain chemicals um, th that are good for one thing. Okay, here's one thing about poisons. Poisons, they're, most poisons that I can think of are good for one thing or another. Like WD-40, is good if you have something stuck or a lock or something. But 
if you drink it, it's very harmful. It's very harmful. It can kill you. If you drink your cleaning products like your Windex and your Lysol and Pine Sol, they're amazing for your floors, but they're awful for your body. Like, if you were to drink that, you'd be in serious harm and or, or even death. Um, so... All poisons are good for some things, but they're poisonous to other things, Um, you know. And I said that to say a, a poison doesn't start off as a poison usually. It starts off as something good, but as it sits or... If not something good, something understandable. But what happens is that anger or resentment or or hate or or you know uh, all all those negative emotions turn into poison by by the by them sitting there. Um, and you may start off uh, doing something for one reason, because somebody may hurt you really, really bad, like cheating in a relationship, or, you know, some friend may betray you, and you may be really, really angry, but Give that anger time, and that anger will turn into something that will kill you emotionally, that will kill you, um, that will kill you in some kind of way that will, that will harm you emotionally, and, um, And it will cause all kinds of havoc. And it doesn't start off as a poison. Usually, emotional poison starts off uh, with something understandable. But then it sits there and it rots and it rots and and it rots. Until it becomes a, a cancerous seed that is hard to rem- remove. And the thing about emotional poison with some cancers and, and poisons, they can pump your stomach. Cancers, they, some tumors, they can remove depending on uh, where it is. Um, Because sometimes all cancer is, is good cells that go kind of haywire. So sometimes with your emotional poisons, they could start off with something good or something understandable. But over time, if that thing is not dealt with, if that anger is not dealt with, if that loneliness is not dealt with, if that thing is not dealt with, it will become a poison and kill you slowly, very slowly. Because you know what? Resentment piles onto resentment, and little thing piles onto little thing until it's so high that you can't see your way clear. But the Lord came today 
and he says, I'm, I'm getting that poison out of you. The Lord wants to heal you from your poison today. And the, the first thing that I found in getting rid of emotional poison is to admit that it's there. You have to admit that um, you're dealing with something. That that anger and resentment is there. Or you have to admit that I have horrible feelings towards this person because of this. And once you admit that it's there, you can deal with it. Avoidance will not heal you. Let me say that again. Avoidance will not heal you. Whatever is there will fester. An emotional poison, you cannot just pray it away. You cannot just praise it away. You cannot just preach it away. You've got to deal with the poison that's going on inside of you that is slowly but surely killing you. There are so many people that are so angry and so resentful, and they're like, why is this, why can't I get rid of this? Why can't I get free from this? It's because that poison is so insidious and so deep that it will take um, tools from a therapist, uh, tools from a professional, and tools from God to help you get it out. But the first step in dealing with emotional poison is, is to acknowledge that it's there. And the second step is to ask for help, ask for therapy, because most emotional poisons, when you get to the stage where something is an emotional poison and it's eating you up and it's killing you from the, out, from the inside, that's the stage usually before that you should ask for help. But definitely when you get to that stage, um, you need help because there there are issues under there that are stemming from maybe your childhood or whatever that are a trigger to your poison. Because things maybe happen to you, whether it be abuse or whether it be an episode from your childhood that caused you to be this way. Nobody is born angry. Nobody is born bitter. Nobody is born negative. Something happened to you in your childhood to cause you to be that way. Maybe not in your childhood, but in your early life or something happened to you that, that you may not have realized contributed uh, to your poison. And I think that sometimes we're afraid to deal with that poison. But I can tell you, when you clear out the poison... And when you can get to the root, what therapists help you do is they help you get to the root. They, they don't tell you what's wrong with you or whatever, but they give you tools to get to, to help you discover what's going on or what happening to you. That's what therapy does. They kind of give you 
tools to understand what's going on with you because they've studied different techniques to just help people find tools about what's going on with them. Their job is not to tell you and not to, to, to fix you. Their job, to my mind, is one, to be a listening ear, and two, to give you tools to discover what's going on with you and give you wisdom how to cope with what's going on with you. To get rid of the poison in your life because um, that poison has made you bitter. That denial has made you bitter. That resentment has made you di- bitter. That ab- avoidance has made you bitter. And don't, don't you want to have real joy in your life? Don't you want to enjoy your family and with your friends? And that poison is killing you. And I want to talk a bit here about poisonous people. Sometimes um, there are people that, that have some childhood trauma generational trauma going on inside and they infect other people and everybody that they're around they're around gets negatively infected by them to the point where nobody wants to be around them because nobody wants to be around uh, somebody that makes them sick. If you, if you, um, that's why we were so careful with COVID when, when it was rampant. It's still out there. Colds and flus are still out there. But the reason why people had to be alone during COVID is because the basic reason is that people didn't want to get sick. That's why That's why it was mandated for a while that we wear masks and whatever because people didn't want to get sick. Nobody wants to be infected physically. You know when you're around somebody without a cold, you're running the other way because you don't want to get sick because it, when that poison infects you, it spreads. And what you don't realize with emotional poison is if you don't deal with that poison, it's not just about you. It's about your children and your children's children. Just like what happened in this book with the Two people that were in love and the grandparents just hated each other. Their dislike and their resentment and their poison affected their grandchildren. So that, you understand why your family's in such disarray? It's because your poison that was not dealt with was passed on to your children. This is what happened with slavery. This is why a lot of um, people are still uh, racist because something in their bloodline was not dealt with. You know, you know, they may have abolished slavery. They may have well, um, abolished Jim Crow, it may have been uh, kind of, it may have been eradicated, but you can physically eradicate something, but emotionally, the seed goes deep, and it becomes a poison. It becomes a poison that is killing people and affecting people, and 
such a negative way. And what we need to do in society is get rid of the poison, admit that there's a problem, and work through it. Don't don't say, well, I'm not a racist or whatever. Admit that there is a problem, and then you can deal with it. And this goes beyond racism. This this can be for anything. It can be for sexism. It can be for um, all of that. And if we don't admit that there's a poison inside of us, that there's something inside of us that we have not dealt with, as a society, and as a person, it will infect and affect our whole entire environment. And I think that's what's, and in my opinion, that's what's happening to a lot of people. A lot of people are getting infected and affected by societal poisons that they didn't start but have been passed on. And I don't think we've ever dealt with societal poisons, attitudes that have been that have been passed on. And I think until we deal with them, it will it will just keep going on and on. Um and I always I always thought of uh, the song by Bill, by Bill, by Bell Vibzibo back in the 90s, you know. That girl is poison. And it kind of totally, um, it kind of really t- totally talks about a girl that he liked, but she was no good. And sometimes with poisonous people, they come with their smiles, they come with whatever they come with. And they're, but inside of them is vindictive, it's spiteful, it's all of that. And they didn't, they didn't start that way. But something happened to them, either in their childhood, maybe they were trained that way to be poisonous, but, and they start spreading it to other people. And sometimes um, people are, people's, people are poisonous by their words first. Um and by their actions, and what I always say is words are, are seed, and you can spread uh, poison by your words, and I'm not talking about constructive criticism, and I'm not talking about constructive opinion, that's good, but if you're putting something in depth, someone down always and being poisonous by by your words that is something that you have to deal with and understand if a person is dealing with emotional poison that's their responsibility your only responsibility is how you receive it or don't receive it. You don't have to receive everybody's poison. Because if you receive it and it gets into you, then it starts to fester in you and poison you. But if you if you hear poisonous words um, that are designed to get you down. You can reject that. But the problem is 
most people that receive poisonous words think that's what they did, what they deserve, because that's all they've heard throughout their life that they're good for nothing, that they'll never be nothing. Let me tell you, if you've heard that throughout your life, let me tell you that is a lie. That is has always been a lie. God created you. You're beautiful. You're meant to be in his kingdom. You're meant to be here. You are full of purpose and destiny, and you can make it. You were not an accident, not a mistake, and you deserve to be loved. You deserve to be loved. You deserve to be cared for. You deserve to be whole. Your legacy is not brokenness. Your legacy is wholeness. And I just want to tell you right now, you deserve it all. You deserve everything that God has in store for you. And and by the power of the Holy Spirit, I cancel every negative word. Every negative word, every negative thing spoken on you, everyone that tried to curse you by the power of the Holy Spirit, I cancel it out now. And I just pray that goodness flow in your life. I declare that the blood of Jesus now is taking away every negative thing. And I declare right now that all those people that cursed you, I declare that they will not own, that they will not have the power over you that you have given them. I declare that from this day forward. Your life will be full of joy, peace, gentleness. I I declare that you can be gentle, that you that you, that you are not an angry person, that you are not a jealous person, that you are not what whatever they said about you, that you are not a low down dirty dog, that you are not a slut, you are not any of that. Though you you are not that. Those were your experience in the past. But every day is a day for new experiences. And you don't have to make those choices. You don't have to make those choices that your mother made. You don't have to sleep with man or after man without being married to them because you think it's going to give you validation. I declare right now that you are better than that, that you will be the woman that God has called you to be, that you don't have to... um, sell drugs or do any of that to prove you're a man. You will be the man that God has called you to be always, and you can be. Every every day is a day for new beginnings. Every day it is possible to make the choice to be who God has called you to be. Forget about those old things. What they told you is a lie because they didn't know any better. Don't be angry at people for not knowing what they're saying is a lie. Pray for them because they don't know what they're doing. They don't know that the po- that what they even spread to you was poison. They thought it was truth, but it wasn't truth. It was poison, because real truth is designed to heal you. Real truth is designed to restore you. We Real truth is designed to help you. Real truth doesn't put you down and make you feel bad. Real truth 
is designed to change you, is designed to restore you, and designed to help you. So any truth, any so-called truth that doesn't do that, it's not truth. It's poison. Like, they'll be like, let me tell you the truth. No, no, it's not truth. It's your poison. The only true truth is his truth. A lot of, like, there's a whole, there's, there's, um, a whole thing that says, live your truth. But, and some people say, well, which truth do I live? Like, my truth changes from day after day. But the truth that you live is not your truth, or it's not the truth that you think. It's God's truth. And day by day, that truth will become your truth. You know, um, I know what they mean. They mean to be authentically you. I don't, like, I think for me, um, that, that saying, it depends on the context you're, um, you're, you're saying it from, because if your truth is just, I can do whatever I want, I can just do me, I can be whatever I want, that's not your truth. That's just, (laughs) that's just, um, what you feel in the moment. It's like, if it feels good, do it. That's, that's one thing of your truth. And the other thing is to be authentically yourself. And I think that's what most people mean when they say live your truth, is to be authentically yourself. But... Sometimes, most times, you don't know who that is. So how are you supposed to live something that you don't know what it is? So what what I say is live his truth until it becomes your truth. So I say live his truth until it becomes your truth. And because if you live his truth, you will discover over time his version of your truth. And you will discover and enjoy your authentic self. Because when your authentic self comes from Jesus, and who he's created you and designed you to be, and not who the world has told you that you you are and not, that truth can stay. Your and what like I said before, your truth changes, but his truth doesn't. So live his truth until it becomes until it merge, live his, live his truth until it becomes your truth, and your truth and his truth will merge to create your, someone who's authentically you, and your truth and his truth will will be the same thing. And you'll be able to live the authentic life that God has called you to be, to live. The reason why people search for external validation is because they don't know uh, the fullness of God. And they don't know who he's created them to be. They think that God is a Christian religion or a Muslim thing or whatever. No, no, no. 
God so loved the world. The world is his. So if you're a part of the world, you have a chance to know him. You know, so, so, like, if you get a chance to know him, you'll, you'll start uncovering who you really are. I don't think me, myself personally, is that people don't discover who they are. People uncover who they are. Because who you are is there from birth along with skin color, eye color, and all that. You just have to uncover it. Uncover the truth that God has ordained you to have. It's And um, and I heard this song by James Morrison. He said, I'm not lost, just undiscovered. And I think a lot of people are undiscovered. They don't know who they are. And I think the only true way to uncover and discover, uncover his truth so that it can become your truth is to get to know him. And how you do that, um, it's just basically saying you need him. It's just basically saying, God, I need help and I need you. And he's just waiting for you to do that. And a lot of uh, preachers are sold to, to say a prayer, but I just like to tell people, speak to God from you, because I can't talk to God for you, because I'm not you. I have no idea what you're going through or where, where you are in your faith. And you don't have to use fancy words or anything. Just... Just cry out to him the way you do. He hears you. He loves you so much. And, um, and, um, he loves you so much and will hear you when you call. And if you need help after that, you could always message me and say, I heard your message and blah, blah, blah. And I'll be happy to help you after that. But you have to take the initial step and say, I need you. And I'm going to say something controversial. I'm say, I'm going to say, you don't have to fully believe yet. You just have to be curious to say, you could say, I don't know if this is real, I don't know if you're real, but if you are, or but just help me, or what, whatever stage you are in your life, and and he will make himself uh, available to you in the way that, that you can understand that he's real, and you can understand that he's God. And, um, I know the Bible says believe and confess, but I've learned through my own experience that even if you don't believe and confess, if you just even ask for help, it, he'll, he'll take you up and get you to the place where you can believe and confess. And it's a wonderful thing. It's not an easy road being a believer. It's 
it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of hard trials and whatever, but it's so worth it to have uh, someone there to give you instruction, someone there to be with you. It, it is the most amazing thing ever to be a believer and to follow Jesus Christ. And when you understand who Jesus Christ is and who he's not, it will change your whole life. So, guys, thank you so much. And it will definitely start um, you getting the poison out of your life. And he will guide you to the resources and and the people that will get the poison out of your life. Thank you, guys. Bye.